Uh, can't give it up for Nat Jan up again on the guitar. Uh, so the, uh, the music scene, in some ways, is very tight knit and, and compact. So I knew a lot of people who knew Nat Jan from early on. So Nat was introduced to me about maybe nine or ten years ago from a mutual friend. And we played, uh, I first hired Nat to play with me at a club in, in Upper Manhattan, in Fort Tryon Park, overlooking uh, Washington Heights. Beautiful, it's hard to imagine that there's this beautiful park like, up on a hill overlooking the city. It's still part of the city. It's called Fort Tryon Park. And the place was called the New Leaf. And I hired Nat. Uh, we were actually doing a lot of jazz standards at the time. And I said, you know, Nat, I also write a lot of original music and if you're feeling adventurous i would like to take you on the road so uh, the rest is history and i'm very lucky to have that because he's very busy he's a, he's a band leader in his own right he plays at a club in new york called the 55 bar he's there uh several times a month usually on monday nights and you can find him there he's a leader a sideman he does it all and he's got beautiful long hair which, you know identifies him as a guitar player. <laughs> From a young age, he was born with long hair. And said, you are a guitar player. You have been chosen. And I met Matt Fike on a theater gig in New York at a place called The Secret Theater. And the show was called The Wild Party. So I was in the pit orchestra. Now, it sounds like a really exciting show. It was actually quite depressing because in the musical, everyone dies. It's like really depressing and dark. But the good news is, I met Matt Fife, and I heard this drummer playing in the group. There was probably six or seven of us in the pit, and Matt was playing percussion and drum set. And I said, wow, he had a perfect sense of time. Perfect. I need someone like that, because as you can see, we tour in this group, there's no bass today. Sometimes we have bass, sometimes we don't. We have four or five people, two or three people, that instrumentation changes, and I needed a drummer who was flexible. Flexibility is the key in the music scene. Trust me, you need to be flexible. I was talking about this in the clinic. You have to shape shift. You have to become something different to fit the situation. So I said, Matt, would you like to come out on the road with me? He said, thankfully, he said, sure, let's do it. And uh, we talked about this in the clinic. A lot of what we do in this group is very spontaneous. The folk melodies, the key changes, and the songs that I write um, are very, they change keys a lot, and they have different sort of uh, tones and colors. And I'm grateful to have musicians who can follow that with me. Uh, now, we were in Waynesboro last night. We tried a new song in Waynesboro. We're going to try it out on you guys right now. Because you look like a very adventurous audience. <laughs> and you look like a friendly audience. We're going to try to be nice to us. We have not played this song. Uh, we did it once on this tour. We're going to do it right now. It's called John Lizard Comes Home.
much, Nat Janoff, Matt Flight, I'm Daniel Bennett. It's good to be here tonight. And you know what's great about being uh, in, oh, I was going to say Baltimore, we're not in Baltimore, we're in Abingdon, Maryland. We actually, we pulled into town, and we were at a, a, a little a gas station, and we said, hey, we asked the guy, where can we get some great dinner? And he said, go to, I'm going to mess up the name here, Millbrook? Millbrook? Bush Mill. Uh, Bush, 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 Bush Mill. Mill. The Bush Mill restaurant, Bar and Tavern. Oh man, I'm going to be working that off all week. That was good. A little pulled pork, I think you got the Reuben sandwich, hot dogs, pizza. <laughs> That's tour life. No, we didn't. We, we really try our best to eat uh, you know, salad at least once a week. No, it was great though. It was what a great restaurant. The place was packed at noon. It was like just packed with people. And then it got better. Because after we ate, we jumped in the car and we got on this road. I don't know what road it was, but this road had construction for like three miles. <laughs> Three miles of paving and repaving. I don't know what they were doing. Let's break up the, the pavement and repave and pave. What street is that? It's right down here. Okay, you're all yelling out different street names. That's, that's, that's a bad sign. But we made, we made it. This was, you can't miss it because there was it's probably like two miles of construction on this little residential street. So, wow, that was, that was one for the books right there. I thought New York was bad. That was like, wow, we're never going to get out of this, this street. We're just going to miss the whole concert. Wow. So we have a song request. Um, by the way, uh, all of our music is on YouTube. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Please get your phones out. I know you are all internet inclined. Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube. So, okay, phones are great. Find us online. You can do it while we play the song. Pull your phone out. It's not going to bother me. Find the group. It's Daniel Bennett group, like Tony Bennett. Tony's my uncle. Just made that up. <laughs> um, find us uh, online. Give us a virtual hug, if you will. And Or if you're not on social media, because maybe you're living in the 1980s, that's okay. <laughs> you can join the mailing list. Go to our website and join the mailing list. But stay in touch with us, because we really love to meet new people when we're on the road. And it's 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 just really... And, and if you just, Taking video and photo, that's great. Just share and tag, and uh, you know, virtual hooks are good. Now, we have a song request because someone heard this on YouTube. The song is called I'm Not Nancy because you know what? I'm not Nancy. This is called I'm Not Nancy. <laughs> Thank you. 
you know, the nice thing about touring, we get to meet a lot of new people. And every, every night is different. Every night is, is a different audience, and people are always asking. We had some great questions, by the way, in the clinic. We had some great questions. I mean, just so thank you for that. I appreciate that. And all the young artists, musicians that were there, and uh, we had some more seasoned musicians there. That's great. We just love working with musicians and non-musicians. The nice thing about Choose Civility, it's for all of us. Am I right? Because, I mean, you know, being uncivilized <laughs> is, well, I mean, that's really the only other option. Am I right? So I think Choose Civility is probably the good way to go. Um, so we're very honored to be a part of this, and it's so nice because music brings us together. Let me tell you, when we meet people after our concerts, people are not coming up to us and asking us about current events and, and all this stuff. No! Because we're united by music. Nobody's asking any of these questions. Nobody, we're not, it's all because, you know what? We're all just human beings at the end of the day, right? Am I right? We're all just human beings at the end of the day, and we're united by, check it out, music, art, poetry, sports. It's amazing the things that we put our minds to, it, the things that we all share in common. Okay? It's, it's really, and I tell you, as a musician, it's an honor to be a part of that in a small way. Just meeting new people. Maybe people are different from me or the same. It doesn't matter because we're bonded through our music. That's our connection to our audience. And uh, let me tell you, uh, you know, the Bible says that faith without works is dead. So if you're just, hey, I'm all about love, true civility, but then I'm a total jerk after the show. It's not going to go very far, is it? Am I right? Right? Love, you know, it's like it's like love without a little extra. That's not what, you know, we want to show, I hope that we're showing love by performing for you guys today, and I hope that we're connecting with you guys in a real way. It's, I, I, I one thing that I learned as I travel is that we're all so similar in so many ways. People always ask us, hey, you know, is it, is it a lot different to go to the West Coast when we were in Los Angeles a month ago? Or is it different when you're in the South or in the North? No! People are the same. You go overseas, you go in. People, listen, human beings, human nature, am I right? We're all, hey, check your pulse, check your pulse. We're just human beings. So it's an honor to be another fellow human being. Can I say that? I'm a human being, just like the rest of you. So. Thank you for letting me be human. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's all we have, that's all we are. And our time on this earth is very short. So, you know, choose it why, what you do wisely. Uh, I was telling, a student had a great question in the clinic. She said, how do you overcome stage fright? You know, you know what I told her? I said, it's not really a musical solution all the time. A lot of it is just your upbringing. Who are you surrounding yourself with? But do you have friends who are uplifting and encouraging? Do you have a, um, are your parents encouraging to do to do good, great things? You know, if you have people around you who are supportive of what of your dreams, you're going to have a great self-esteem, and that's going to come through when you perform. Um, I know that's what drew me to working with Matt and Matt, is they're confident in who they are. I fully respect them as human beings, 150 percent. In fact, I I look up to these guys. I really do. I'm telling you. People think that as a leader, well, I'm leading the show, so therefore I, I have all the answers or something. I don't. I mean, I think, you know, I don't. It's an equal group up here, and I can really learn from Matt and Nat equally, not just about music, but about life. We have conversations about everything in the car. We spend a lot of time driving around in rental cars, I'm telling you what, you, you, you have no choice but to bond and to, and to learn about each other and to, to respect each other. So I just want to say, what an honor it is to be part of the True Civility campaign, uh, which this is the, really the flagship is right here uh, in the, the library system, the Hartford Library system, Abingdon Library. It's all kind of happening here, and this is where all the programs and all the different things are happening. We've got we've got Facebook Live for this concert. We've got um, they're streaming. It's just a lot of activities, and it's it's all happening right here. So I'm I'm really happy to be here. Thank you, Leslie. It's an honor to be here. I want you guys to know that um, much love to all of you. We would like to we saved our favorite two songs for the end of the show. And uh, we're going to play them right now. Now, this song is actually the oldest song on the set list. It's called... Now, listen, there's actually a movie reference here because my wife and I were watching The Karate Kid uh, before I went up and left for tour. You know, an old movie, 1984, you know. You've got uh, uh, Daniel LaRusso is the kid from Newark, New Jersey, and he, they move across the country to, to Beverly Hills, and he's getting bullied, and it's, oh, it's just, it's awful. It's actually 
the movie kind of brings me to tears. It's kind of a very emotional movie. Um, but on a lighter note, there's a scene in the movie where Mr. Miyagi gets Daniel, who's the main hero of the story, and Mr. Miyagi gets Daniel to paint the fence. Yeah. Paint the fence. Take wax on, wax on, right, right. Send the deck, right. Paint the fence. Well, this song is called. It's called Paint the Fence.
houseboat confusion. <laughs> Thank you. 